Okay, we're gonna try to go do some chisel plowing today. Um, I drove around a little bit, looked at some fields, tried to, tried to formulate a plan. We'll see if it falls apart the first time I drop plow on the ground, but um, we are gonna start over on that bean field that got all tore up. Try to get those ruts pulled shut. Um, and see how things go from there. If I get that done and there's one little piece I'm probably gonna try to do on the way back and park this thing at mom and dad's tonight and then at least get that piece in front of grandma and grandpa's done. Good on oil. Trying to do this one-handed. Okay, now it's a challenge. Get in there. Aha. Um, it's already got fuel in it. I fueled it up a couple weeks ago, back before we caught a bunch of rain. Um, so that's kind of the plan. My uncles would go, but uh, I don't know about the back field over there. So I figure we'll go, we'll do it this way. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get hooked up and get over to the field. So I'm gonna go grab a paper towel real quick while this thing's warming up and at least walk, wipe the outside of my windows down so that I can see. And uh, we'll catch you guys over at the field. All right, let's see if we can get this mess straightened out. There's no water standing down here in the swale. There was a few weeks ago, so that's dried out. Generally, that's a good sign. There might still be a couple greasy spots up on top of the hill, but gotta do something to get these ruts pulled shut. Because the thing about ruts is, if you just let them sit, they'll stand full of water and then it'll be dry in between them and then the ruts themselves will be wet and it just so it's just even if you got to work it a little wet to get them pulled shut you're better off let me uh, stick you guys up here
transport lot gremlin strikes again. It's not even wet. Why? How? Why? Damn thing. I need to make, I need to make a latch to pin them things down. It's just one of them things I always forget about. There. this four acre piece off and then try to call it a day because I got to get home before you know what time it is what time is it 7 30 I got to get home and make a couple phone calls regarding my trip to Iowa this coming week I had to push it back a week because I kind of forgot that the last weekend in March is uh, Easter weekend didn't figure that'd work out very well but it worked out because this this next this upcoming week at least here the weather's supposed to be garbage so it wouldn't be doing anything anyhow so it worked
14 yeah 14 more acres done that wasn't done before so making headway and do a little bit more tonight but like i say i gotta go make a couple phone calls for the iowa trip so we can get some more done tomorrow gotta talk to my landlord here and see if he mind if i trim a couple trees up before spring or before planting too there's one down there that needs a big lip big limb knocked off because it's hanging way out over the field and then trim some of these guys up on that side of this patch here not a whole lot maybe hour hour and a half worth of work but make life a little easier but anyway i'm gonna get home and we will catch you guys tomorrow all right we're back Um, this field, this field actually mall boarded and it actually settled out really nice, but after I mall boarded it last summer, after we took the weed off, uh, all this foxtail came back and there was a bunch of, uh, yeah, uh, velvet leaf and some jimson weed and some other stuff so to make it easier and nicer to fit hit or hit with the finisher and not have a bunch of grassy cloudy bald up messes going through the harrow i'm just gonna chisel plow it and bury all the green stuff and uh make it a little cleaner This field done, the piece in front of grandma and grandpa's, that 10 acres there, that I was gonna tile, but too late to work or worry about that now, especially with the stuff that still needs done. Um, and then, depending on what we got to tie, doors I almost get the front field finished. Crop of volunteer 
cover crop wheat on it. You can tell where the water lays because that's where nothing grew. But there's a, I can't see it on video, but right there on top of that hill is the base for my tile guy's uh, transit. Or, I, uh, not transit, GPS globe. Um, so I'm just going to farm around that. That way it stays there because hopefully AEP gets their shit together and gets these trees taken out this fall or this summer so that we can dig that ditch and then worry about our tile system that needs to go in here to solve this wet spot. So, it would have been nice to have it done, but it is what it is.
quick. I figured I'd show you this. This is that uh, steak I was telling you about. Um, basically what you do with this and the reason I'm going to farm around it, you don't want to move it, is this sets your base point for uh, setting grade when you're when he's running his tile machine. Um, drives a stake in the ground. He can set a GPS transmitter on it. And if Obviously, he came out here, drove around with his, uh, he's got a uh, Polaris Ranger set up with GPS stuff on it so he can GPS the field, get your topography and all that stuff so he can lay out a tile grid and then throw all that stuff in the computer, make a tile map with grade and everything in it and then throw his base back on here and then it'll transmit to the tile plow so that the tile plow remains on grade and leave the stake here that way like obviously we're not going to get to it yet this spring because things aren't going to work out but that way you leave the stake here you don't have to come back and re-gps anything you just take the globe off go to your next job bring the globe back set it back on and away you go again so that's why that's going to stay here for now all right that ground's done it, it, it was obnoxiously hard for some reason. Don't know why. And then this low spot right here was wet. And then the low spot up there that normally holds water was wet. But these two spots in this field are two of those spots that if you don't work them and break them open, they'll just lay there wet. If there's any sort of ground cover, they'll just lay there wet and they'll stay wet and they'll never dry out because there's... A constant source of water to them from some sort of there's just there's a spring that runs across this whole farm starting up there by the barn um they got a constant source of water so they just stay wet and stay wet and stay wet and if you don't break them open whether that be when it's wet or whatever but once it's broke open 40 24 to 48 hours dry enough to work just one of them things but i'm gonna go grab a little bit more fuel i think i got enough to do what i want to do with my uncles but i'm not sure so because that gauge actually doesn't start reading you can't get the tall sending unit for this tank anymore they give you a short one for like a regular 55 series tank so uh that doesn't start reading until or doesn't come off full until about three quarters of a tank so go grab a little bit more just to be safe and then i'll go finish up that front field of my uncle's and that'll be a day all right looks like we got some trash to pick up first every time i come over here there's shit scattered across the field i don't know where he found it but sitting up here next to the milk house my uncle picked up a really nice clean new holland chain baler kind of a shame because it's going to sit here it's going to sit outside and not be such a nice chain baler anymore if i had a little bit more hay to work with i'd I'd try to look for one of those because they generally go pretty cheap and they're pretty good old balers. And that's, I mean, that thing right there, that is, it is clean. Like, clean, clean. Like, always shed kept kind of clean. I didn't, I didn't get a good enough look to see what model it is. I think it's an 800 something. Clean, clean, like super nice. And it's gonna turn out about like the one sitting over there in the weeds. But such is life. There's probably five-ish acres here left, maybe a little more.
not sound good. Oh. Oh. Oh, fuck. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Oh, fuck. All right, Shelly's coming to get me. Um, naturally, mom and dad are out to dinner, so um, I have a spare. I have a drive shaft. I just can't remember if it's a top or a bottom. Um, but without that drive shaft, that's your live shaft. So you've got no, you've got no, uh, no hydraulics, no nothing. Um, so. I can't move, I can't steer, I can't do squat. Can't pick the plow up. So I gotta look and see which shaft it is that I have and get a jack so we can put some pressure on the nose and push this pin up and get it bolted back in. Um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to say the least. Heck of a way to end a perfectly good day, right? Well, it's 10 o'clock. I came over and I worked on it in the dark for an hour and a half and got the pin shoved back in most of the way, so it's not an immediate danger of falling face first into the dirt now. Um starting to get a, I get hunger headaches really bad and I'm starting to get one of those and I'm tired and oh that was not a way to it, it was a good week too it was a nice productive week and that was that was not the way I wanted to end it but hopefully I can come up with a drive shaft tomorrow and we can get that pin put back in and um get it all uh, put back together and back over to my house and back in the barn. And when those bolts go back in that pin, they're getting red Loctite on them. Yeah. I cleaned the holes out with uh, brake cleaner so that they're nice and clean. And hopefully red Loctite takes care of that problem kicker of it is I checked those bolts I didn't throw a wrench on them but I looked at them then there was no sign of that pin dropping down but I looked at those bolts before I started today because I'm just in the habit of that I look at those bolts the first you know getting in the tractor the first time every day so that's the part that ticks me off but anyhow um, tomorrow's supposed to be raining and not that great. I think it's still supposed to be somewhat warm, but, um, I just kind of want to get that thing put together and back home. So I'm not going to screw with video on it because I just, I just want to get it done and over with. So, um, well, I'll, I'll finish this video when it's back at the house, but I'm not going to video working on it because it's going to be dark and or cold and rainy and nasty, and I'm just, yeah. So we'll uh, catch you guys tomorrow once it's back at the house. Fingers crossed. All right, I'm back out here working on the 150, trying to get it mobile again. Uh, still got to find out about a drive shaft. Um, hopefully a guy down the road. He's, I know he's got a 4150 park tractor. It's just a matter of whether or not he wants to get rid of a shaft or not but anyway I'm trying, I'm trying to get this pin back in and I'm fighting it um but I found why I'm fighting it um 
apparently this pin has been broke at least once before because it's got these two weld lines right here that have been turned off those would not be because the weld line for the or the weld bead for the flange is right here so that's been broke before which might also explain why the top pin on the hinge on the 4150 and 4180 is a problem child it's a known problem child um but that could possibly be why this one's more of a problem child than normal is because this pin's been screwed up before so i guess i mean we'll get it back together and make my changes i want to make and get it through this spring but uh i guess i'll have to see if i can find a new pin and then when i do the pin might as well do the bushings and everything up in that center pivot but um yeah I guess it's good to know that because that could have been a problem later down the road um i i mean the whole thing would have been nice if it just wouldn't happen but at least it didn't happen on the road at least it happened up in front of the field instead of way out back so it'd just be nice if it hadn't rained last night and turned this whole thing into a mud hole but anyway i'm gonna keep on keeping on here but i found that and figured it was interesting and video worthy so i gotta go get a grinder though so i can clean up this is not fresh i have no clue what the heck did that i i don't know what i i don't know but it turned whatever did it there's a big burr right here and that won't let it go back up into the hole because that's where i keep stopping is right when that burr starts to enter that lower bore so i gotta go get a grinder so i can clean that off okay another update Took a trip down to E Old Boneyard. There used to be more of these here, but over the years they've disappeared. These guys have helped me out more times than I can count. If I remember right, he told me at their peak they had 13 white four wheel drives between 150s, 175s, and 210s. They had 13 of them running and operating. Um, I don't know how many they've had over the years. They that one they bought brand new. Um, but I got a drive shaft. Um, it universals feel good. Just needs greased up. Um, probably take it home real quick, pop it apart, clean up or clean everything up. But this is kind of one of them tractor archaeology things you find out. Mine. This is obviously the one out of mine. Mine's got a 4210 upper shaft in it. This is a 4150. This is a standard 4150 shaft. This is my, the lower shaft in my in my 150. Still looks like this. But apparently at some point something must have happened to the upper shaft in mine and they swapped it out for a 4210 shaft because you see this one's heavier um and I, th I, I think actually if once the 4150 parts ran out i think in the four the 175s might have those heavier shafts too i don't know i've i've, I've never been around one because there's not nearly as many 175s as there are 210s but I think that was actually the replacement shaft if you had to replace the drive shaft in one of these. Um, but that 4210 sitting on the other side of that soil finisher uh, has the same shafts in it. And I was going to steal one out of that, but unfortunately the upper shaft in that has a big old dent in the tube and that's not going to work that great. Um, but another thing, this tractor is a lot newer than mine. Uh, mine's a 74, it's the first year, it's uh, the 700 and something according to the serial number it's like i think it's a 744th one built or something like that um if the serial numbers go in numerical order i don't know how the four one i don't know how the white serial numbers work and uh floyd county museum does not have access to a whole lot of information on that because agco gave them all the oliver stuff but they wouldn't give them any of the white stuff because reasons but so this one has a glass fuel filter which is different than mine you see it up there in the frame this one has the newer style wiring harness on it um that eliminates there's a couple wires that get eliminated and they do something different this has got the newer wiring harness on it and this is um as this is relevant to what we're doing right now check out the change they made to that upper kingpin they got rid of the four bolt flange like this made a big wide square flange it's got a keeper bolt here and then this one is actually a through bolt with a lock nut which is actually loose 
so clearly it didn't solve the problem all the way but uh and then they got rid of the zerk here in the uh steering pivot and put it here and cross drilled the pin so that's why if, if anybody i recommend that if anybody's ever looking for a white four-wheel drive skip over a 4150 to 4180 if i'd have known what i know now about them i'd have skipped over my 4150 and i'd have held out for a 4175 or a 4210 because they were learning so much so fast and the 4150 and the 4180 it's not even funny and they're not even the same year to year and then when the 175 and the 210 came out all of the changes that got made through the production of the 4150 and the 4180 were integrated into the 210 and the 175 plus all the changes they made in between models the biggest one being and the most obvious one being they took this entire center section and flipped it over and the stationary pin moved up top and it's not stationary it's actually a ball pin or a, um, a ball joint of sorts but uh you get the idea and then the the steering yoke and everything moved down here the cylinder moved down the, the stabilizer bars everything was down here um and that greatly greatly improved this center section when they did that um like the the, the 175 and the 210 basically the only thing that i mean they look very similar but basically the only thing that those two tractors share with the 4150 and the 4180 is the paint almost everything else on them is 100 percent a different tractor and it's for the better so i'm gonna go home and get that shaft cleaned up we'll get that thrown in and we'll be we'll be good to go thank god all right she is all back together i did not end up lock tightening these bolts because um, I'm going to do one of two things. Either A, I'm going to make some tabs that will bridge two bolts um, to make something so you could bend a, a wing over over a flat and make lock tabs. Or, Dad suggested, and it might be if if we could find ready-made bolts, um, he thinks that McMaster Car has them in the right size, get uh, lock wire bolts with the, with the hole drilled through the head. I mean, technically, you could probably make your own out of these. The lock wire bolts generally have a taller head to make up for the the hole you got to drill through them. Um, but get some lock wire bolts and actually run a ring lock wire through them. That way, even if, they, if for some reason they came loose, um, they can't come out because they'd be held in by the lock wire. So we'll solve that or address that. But um, like I say, probably I'll get there's a drive shaft shop down in South Bend called Action Machine that should be able to fix my shaft because like i say it really other than busting the the tube it didn't mangle anything else up luckily so if they can make me or if they can fix my shaft get a 210 shaft put back in the top find a 210 shaft for the bottom to have four 210 shafts top and bottom so they're the heavier shafts with heavier universals um and then it won't be a this spring project because there's we're running out of this spring um but get a new pin for up here and get bushings and everything to rebuild the steering knuckle um and make all that right again the bottom seems seems to be tight but the bottom doesn't see near the stress that the top sees so that's kind of the plan um i can't knock the old girl too hard she's she's never let me down when i actually needed her to not let me down um she keeps she keeps giving me signs of her past rough life and that's just part of the fun of inheriting a tractor that didn't necessarily have the greatest life in the world plus inheriting a tractor that was one of the first run built plus inheriting a tractor that uh had a lot of changes and upgrades throughout its production because they were finding all the problems going on down the line. So I was I was, I had a, I was not talking about her, talking very nice about her like yesterday. There were some I was calling her some pretty bad names, but after I calmed down, it's like eh, you can't really you can't really knock her too hard. 
she's been a good old girl. She's allowed me to do a lot of things that I wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So, in every problem we find with her, we do things to make her better than she was coming out of the factory. So, it's all part of the fun. Okay, here's hoping nothing flies apart. She's a little bit loosey-goosey in the splines. That's why it looks like that. So shaft's not bad. She just got some sign of wear. But like I say, this is just temporary. We'll get my shaft fixed and put back in it. Which looks like we're gonna have plenty of time because I was actually looking at the forecast earlier and uh looking like April's gonna be a tad bit wet so anyhow now that uh, the crisis is averted or over however you want to look at it that's it for this one and we'll catch you guys on the next one